Hey there, Steve here. Hope you're doing well. In this video, I want to show you uh, three exercises that can help you uh, get better at your finger positioning on the fretboard when you're, you know, writing riffs or learning other people's songs or, you know, writing your own ideas. So what I'm trying to get at is when you're playing things or writing your own things, are you thinking about where you're placing your fingers on the fretboard and is this the best possible way you can play something with ease? And if you've neglected, you know, like using your little finger for example, you find these exercises hopefully in this uh, video uh, quite useful for you. So if you take a look at some guitarists who do this really well uh, within like the math and proggy kind of scene, so you have like Tim Henson, if you watch the way he fingers his licks and stuff, it's very precise, it's very accurate. And if you take a Chica Nito as well, if you watch his hand positioning, it's just you know, flawless across the fretboard there, and uh, also like someone like um, Mario from Chan, for example, too. So I'll stop uh, boring you to death, and I know how frustrating it is to listen to somebody talk when you just want to get into the, you know, the meat and potatoes of it. So uh, these are the exercises. Um, I encourage you to, if you got your guitar, to pause it first when you see the tab on screen and work out how you would finger it and what's the best way you would try that and then I'll show you the way I do it and you can compare the two. So anyway, here's the first exercise and like I said, feel free to pause it here and you know, try it out for yourself. <laughs> So there's a, um, a slower pace, and I'll play it now at a quicker pace so you can see perhaps how important it can be to think about the fingering to make it easier to play when playing at higher speeds. <laughs> So hopefully you can see there how it, like when you play at a faster speed, the fingering is much more important to get things more smoothly, sounding more correct, and making it easier to play in the long run. So um, a tip I got for this, and you should do this for most things, is think about what's coming next with the fingering. So this is like, I think of it as five different arpeggios in one. So we start off with this um, sus2 arpeggio, D sus2. And because it's quite a stretch, I want you to use your little finger, not use your ring finger. And it's much more uncomfortable that way, I find. And then next we've got this minor 7 shape. So when we move from transition from this, so what's the closest finger? It's going to be your ring finger. That would make things easier there. And afterwards we've got this... Uh, minor nine, uh, major 9 shape here, sorry. So I'm just going to use the same fingering I would for that. And then we're going to slide from the ring finger here, backwards, and then come down onto the 7th fret here on the G string, with your middle finger. And it's a little tricky here, you got to jump across. But sometimes you're going to run into things like that. So I've um, I've put the number in on the tab for you, the finger numbering I should say. So this your index is one, middle is uh, two, ring is three, and little finger is four. So that's going to help you uh, when learning the tab there and getting the fingering correct. So take that one slowly and like I said, break it into parts. And you should do this with everything that you're learning and potentially writing and think about what's coming next so what finger to use next. So that's an exercise in like dexterity and writing those kind of Chan Polyphia style you know riffs in a way, um, a very uh, basic version of that I should say. So we're going to move on to the second exercise which is going to help with your dexterity with your ring and your little finger as well as all the others. So anyway here it is slowly. <laughs> So this one, yeah, is a bit of um, a bit of a finger twister, but uh, once you take it slowly, and again, I've put the numbering on the tab for you to help you there. So this one is descending from the little finger here to the ring, and then coming to the middle. And it's the same shape again, but move a string up basically. Same again. This doubles up as a really good warm-up routine as well, and it's um, one of those 
pattern kind of warm up kind of things, but it will really help with your dexterity, especially with your little finger and your ring finger um, as you try that one out. And I was going from the fifth fret here because it's a bit easier, but once you get more comfortable with it, try it with bigger stretches. So go up to the, go into the first fret here. <laughs> So the last idea is getting you to start thinking about how you can change between either intervals or even chords a bit more easily. So if, for example, I started noticing this when I was watching um, Dave Matthews when I was at college. Uh, there's a song called Tripping Billies and there's this part that goes... <coughs> And I'd always play it like that, but then I watched Dave play it once, uh, live one time, and the way he plays it, it makes much more sense, so... So, yeah, I just noticed that, and it was like a revelation all of a sudden, it was like, wow! Doing that, just that simple thing with your fingers, you know, putting one foot in front of the other really and yeah makes it so much more easier to play especially when you're doing at faster speeds so the last exercise is going to be something like this and this is a part in a recent song I wrote that has this kind of little jazzy part in it I'm just going to play it all as we're using my index and my middle there's nothing inherently wrong with playing it that way of course but you could make it easier Like so, thinking about where it's place, placing your fingers. So uh, that's the last last exercise there. So that's another another finger twister for you. But hopefully they get your you know your brain wired a bit uh, differently and get you um, you know approaching these things in a much more ergonomical manner. All right. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, thanks for sticking with me and going through this one. Let me know if you enjoyed it or what could be possibly improved. Uh, if things were too difficult for you, I can clarify anything down below in the comments for you. As always, I really appreciate watching these videos and if you're looking to support the channel, I have Amazon affiliate links, I've got merchandise such as this, and I've also got a lovely Patreon page. And speaking of patrons, I want to say thanks to all my current patrons uh, that are supporting the channel. And until next time, I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.